For all the hype that Caleb Williams has had over the last two years, there's quite a few people talking about their concerns about him. While few question his physical skills, there are a number of people who are seeing past the hype and wondering if the baby girl wokeness of Caleb Williams is something that they want to get involved in given this year's quarterback heavy draft class. Is it more important to be the number one overall pick or is fit and how that's going to look for what's coming down the pipe for you matter the most? Um, I'd say both are important to me. Um, I'd say that, you know, me getting on the team and then um, being in the right fit, I would say I would, I would put it just right above uh, being the number one pick, but being number one pick is really cool also. These 10 minute, 20 minute things are just, you know, they're testing your, your mental. They're trying to see if you fit for, uh, for, their, for their organization. Um, and if you can do it, they're testing your mental, they're testing how you are, who you are. Um, they're asking questions about that. So it uh, went really well, um, I believe. And, um, you know, we'll see where all of that goes. What did you take away from the Bears specifically? Yeah, um, that, they're, that they're serious about, you know, getting, the, you know, getting in, in position. Um, whether it's they keep Justin on me, um, getting in position to go win games. And so um, that's, the, that's the main takeaway that I've gotten away from. In this video, I'm going to show you how Caleb Williams may not be the guy that you want to pick as the number one draft pick in the overall NFL draft for 2024. And this clip is a conversation between Cam Hayward, plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Jarrett Payton. Jarrett Payton is the son of Chicago Bears all-world Hall of Fame running back Walter Payton. So you got to listen to what he says right here. I'll tell you, you hot button topic. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. Yeah. I'm going to say million dollar question. Million dollar question. You keeping Justin Fields or are you drafting Caleb Williams with the first pick? Caleb could be and has the potential to be something special. And I think, mm -hmm. but that's the word potential. Like potentially he has that. We don't know. But so does Justin. I believe Justin has the exact same thing. Like to me, Justin's more athletic. Um, Caleb might have a better arm like intermediate throws deep throws Justin's got a Justin is is lethal he just uh, doesn't have there's just not enough around the offense really not tailored to him all that we can get into all that stuff if it was me and I'm the GM of the Bears I keep Justin Fields potential he said the word potential a big word that's being bandied about when people are talking about caleb williams especially given the season that he just finished with usc is potential enough to use a first round draft pick on caleb williams now check out what kimberly martin of espn says right here listen very carefully listen everything that i've heard about caleb williams the football player is that he is all ball he is focused he's excited about this opportunity and a lot of teams are excited about him there are a lot of questions about the personality but listen he's a creative playmaker he's a he's a gen z kid like these kids are into different things and 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 that's okay that's okay old school way of thinking about football and this process it doesn't have to be what we're used to it doesn't have to be like we're used to He's different. He's a Gen Z kid. But notice what she said. I'm going to play it again so you guys can hear that. She said, everything I've heard about Caleb Williams, the player. She absolutely couched her statement. She said, all the questions are about Caleb Williams, the person. That's a big differentiation she just made. Nobody questions his talent or his skills. Maybe some people do. But there seems to be quite a few questions about his personality. You have to think to yourself, hmm, why did she have to say Caleb Williams, the football player? Why did she have to make that differentiation? Have you heard that kind of differentiation made with any other player in this NFL draft? I haven't. Listen again. Listen closely in case you missed it. Listen, everything that I've heard about Caleb Williams, the football player, is that he is all ball. He is player. focused. He's excited about this opportunity. And a lot of teams are excited about him. There are a lot of questions about the personality. But listen, he's a creative playmaker. He's a, he's a Gen Z kid. Like, these kids are into different things. Has a lot of questions about his personality. Those were her words, not mine. A lot 
of questions about his personality. You have to see what's going on here. A lot, using her word, a lot of people have questions about his personality, but they're not willing to elaborate on film. They're not willing to upset the wokesters out there and actually say, hey man, something, something isn't right with this kid. We can't put our finger on it, but there's something not right about Caleb Williams. He's just a Gen Z kid. Now, what I want you to do is go look up what a baby girl means when it's used towards a man, a woke baby girl. Look at that definition online if you don't know what it already means and you're gonna be shocked. And at that point, you're gonna to have to ask yourself, is that who you want leading your franchise in the NFL? A baby girl? And if you look at things further, a lot of the questions about Caleb Williams have come out of his own mouth. Check out this quote that he said in an interview with the Los Angeles Times. I've never been in this situation where I'm seven and five and there are no playoff hopes at the end of the season. I'm dealing with it emotionally, dealing with it spiritually and physically. It's been one of the most important years I think I've had. It's tricky. I've had to have talks with Lincoln Riley, his coach at USC, because obviously I haven't been through this or with my family members or people like that. Just how to deal with this and lead and continue to lead his team. How to stay the same person I was before the season or after our first or second loss. So it was different. It was a learning process. He didn't know how to deal with a losing season. It wasn't even a losing season. They were seven and five without being able to go to the playoffs. So much so that it bothered him emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So you, you know that the teams that are basically in the draft order right now are there because their teams are crappy. These are teams that didn't make it to the playoffs, teams that had have problems and they're looking to improve, you know, what, whatever happens by bringing on some strong players in the draft. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're automatically gonna go to the playoffs. Not every player is gonna be CJ Stroud. There are gonna be a few Bryce Youngs. What happens? if the Chicago Bears or Washington Commanders end up drafting Caleb Williams and he can't handle emotionally, spiritually, or physically being on a losing team. Shh, nobody wants to talk about this stuff. Don't, don't mention this stuff about Caleb. He's like Patrick Mahomes. Oh no. There's a whole other side of Caleb Williams, a, a basically a Pandora's box that people don't want to open or at least want you to see that it concerns them. Do his words sound like the type of kid that has it all together? Do his words sound like the type of player that you want to bring into a locker room to lead the other players? It's something you have to think about. Definitely some general managers around the league definitely have to think about it. How will he respond if he gets on a team with a losing record that doesn't even make it to the playoffs next year? It's obvious at this point that there's talk all around the league about whether Caleb Williams is the guy you want to pick number one in the NFL draft. And his draft stock may be falling. I have not thought that Caleb Williams was a lock at number one because I thought Drake May would be the guy. I was wrong in that. Jaden Daniels should be the guy. If I were the Chicago Bears right now, I would take Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Honestly, what's funny is the guy who a year ago people were, and even this year, to some degree, were comparing to Patrick Mahomes that being Caleb Williams, has all of a sudden started to fall out of favor. And we haven't played any games <laughs> in two months. So it's being said, he's beginning to fall out of favor. He is not the guy that some of the analysts have been looking at and going, well, we're gonna tell you that the other guys are better, but are they better physically or are they better mentally? What have people have been seeing at the combine? How have they been interacting with Caleb Williams? What do they know that's leading them to think maybe this might not be the guy? There are some out there who don't think he's ready physically either. Listen to what Greg Cassell of NFL Films had to say right here. But what you didn't see much of at USC, which doesn't mean he can't do it, but you didn't see him executing NFL pass game concepts where he hit his back foot and played with a really strong, refined sense of timing. You didn't see a lot of that. All right, so now people are beginning to talk 
not just about his personality, but about his physical skills as well, his readiness to perform in the NFL. And Cosell isn't alone, not by far. Let's look at an article that was written by a former NFL scout talking about how he has removed Caleb Williams from his draft board altogether. That may be a bit extreme, but he makes some very valid points. This article was written by Daniel Kelly, a former scout for the New York Jets under Bill Parcells and other coaches. He says, former NFL scout removes Caleb Williams from draft board due to latest decision. And I've highlighted a few paragraphs here that we can go over really quick. Um, I'm officially removing him from my draft board at First Round Mock, which is his website. Uh, I've seen and I've heard enough. In short, he's an elite athlete. Nobody questions his physical skills to, for the most part, who's underdeveloped as a quarterback. For starters, his 3.21 second time to throw doesn't translate well to the next level. Bears quarterback Justin Fields has the slowest time to throw in the NFL at 3.23. So it's not much of a difference between he and Justin Fields, the current Chicago Bears quarterback. The whole point of quarterbacks throwing at the combine, because understand he skipped it this year, is to see how they respond to and work with unfamiliar receivers, you know, like the guys they're going to be playing with once they get drafted, as opposed to the receivers at their schools that they're previously accustomed to throwing to. Everything at the Combine is the way it is for specific reasons. The league isn't just running these drills to see if quarterbacks can throw. They can just watch game film for that. Then he goes on to say, he is as out of structure as they come both on and off the field. But there's a bigger concern. I believe the real reason he's afraid of having to throw timing routes to unfamiliar receivers in front of NFL evaluators and decision makers. This is what national media, league evaluators, and decision makers need to drill down on and question Caleb Williams about at the combine. Why would he be afraid of that? Great question. His game film is spray painted with erratic footwork, which is what Greg Cassell just said, evidenced by his slow time to throw. And a quarterback's footwork is foundational in the timing routes receivers run in the NFL. Three, five, and seven step quarterback dropbacks in the pocket, controlling the timing of routes between quarterback and receivers in the league. This is important as receivers match up against fast, agile, and experienced cornerbacks. You're not playing Utah. You're not playing some scrub that USC played. You're playing NFL cornerbacks. That's how these receivers get open. I don't believe Williams trusts receivers at the combine. I believe he's afraid that his footwork and inconsistent downfield ball placement on game film will be exposed and his draft stock will fall. Furthermore, down here, I just want to let you guys see this. Daniel Kelly is a former NFL scout with the New York Jets. He was hired on with Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick, Mike Tannenbaum, and Dick Haley. So he's got some credibility. So when he mentions all that, and obviously he published it, he talks to other scouts, they all see the same game field. There are no secrets. There are no secrets in an NFL draft. They prod and pull you and they do everything else. They measure you, they make you jump, they make you run. But as a quarterback, they'd like to see you throw and they'd like to see you throw in an unfamiliar environment. Throwing it at a pro day at USC or throwing it against you know, re receivers who already know what you're going to do. They wanted to see him throw against unfamiliar receivers. So in this next cut, it's a video I previously posted where I go in depth about his personality issues. I want you to take a look at this and let me know what you think at the end. And then I think when, when it comes to the auto structure in structure conversation, number one, he's unbelievable out of structure. When, when the play isn't there on, like on the field as we expect it to be on paper and he's got to go make something out of nothing, he's awesome. He is Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Lamar in that regard. Uh, he does that a lot. He does not do in structure often. Oh, I've only watched Caleb Williams three games last year, three this year, so I'm only halfway done, okay? The one thing that I that is clear, he is not special. He is not something unique like a Patrick Mahomes. And I hope the Bears don't think, well, let's 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 try to make up for our mistake when we pass up Patrick Mahomes and go get the Patrick Mahomes. The kid is not Patrick Mahomes. Ain't even remotely close to that. So it is unfair to Justin Fields. He has had new coordinator, new coordinator, new coordinator. There's no possible way you can know about your guy when you do that. It's the worst thing that can happen to any player, especially a quarterback. Now, when Justin came out, the one thing that I thought he had 
he had just inexperience. He just needed more experience. He lacked that. But what I have seen in Justin Fields, from my evaluation, there's enough growth and hope there that I would not lose. I would not let him go because I see enough there. There's this like assumption for some reason, we're not even fully into the evaluation process of it, that Caleb Williams, we're sure he's the best guy? We're sure he's the best quarterback you in tell this me. class? I don't think that he is. And I think there will be other people that feel the same way I do. I think Drake May will be the best quarterback in, in a lot of people's, on a lot of people's boards when they come out of this evaluation process. Is Caleb Williams the generational quarterback that a lot of people think? Should the Chicago Bears take him with the number one draft pick? What if there are some other issues that some NFL teams might want to consider before drafting Caleb Williams? I mean, the dude just did a fashion shoot for GQ in a man skirt, and he paints his fingernails to each his own. But are there some red flags that NFL scouts and NFL general managers need to be worried about in regards to Caleb Williams? And that's in addition to Caleb Williams running into the stands and needing to be consoled by his mother and crying into her bosom after he lost a game. I understand. You, you got upset, you ran to the stairs, and you cried into mama's arms, and all the people, all the youngsters on, on Twitter were like, oh, he's, he's in his feels, man. He's just being so genuine. And I, and I, I talked to a few of my buddies, and I'm like, hey, man, you, you want this guy in your team? You jumped into the arms of your mom because you lost a football game. You jumped into the arms in public of your mama because you lost a football game. And then that wasn't it. Then you were home or in the locker room or whatever. Then you tweeted, I just want to go home and cuddle with my dog. I, I mean, I have empathy. I feel bad for the kid. But Notre Dame kicked his ass. So I was, you know, not too upset about that. And then I hear he jumps into the stands after getting beat and cries. And this is a year after he made fun of the Oregon quarterback who had done the same thing, but he didn't cry to his mama. Caleb Williams cried to his mama, then went home and cuddled with his dog and put all that out in public. I said, hey man, my mama, I need my mama. Mama, we lost. Mama, what am I gonna do? Oh, my baby boy, it's going to be okay. Are you friggin' kidding me? Are you telling me the other kids on the team that didn't, didn't like give them side eye and said, dude, did you just go up there and sob to your mama because you lost a football game? Is that the age we're in right now where these kids on social media just break down and fry at the drop of a hat and don't understand adversity and hardship? What are you going to do if, if, when you get into the NFL and Nick Bosa rings your bell and whoops your ass, or Jalen Ramsey picks you off for three times during a game, does a pick six on you, are you gonna go to the sidelines and look up in the stands for mama? And say, oh, mama, mama, he, he intercepted my pass. Oh my God, mama, I don't know if I can take this. You're about to make gazillions. Whoever drafts this guy is going to make, make him a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. And you gotta be sitting back going, what's gonna happen the first time that, you know, he gets his bell rung? What happens if he goes up against Jalen Phillips and Jalen Phillips just knocks his block off? What happens if Sauce Gardner takes one of his passes and goes six the other way? Are you gonna start crying? I think people really have to look at that. I think you really have to see what kind of intestinal fortitude somebody has if they're willing to jump into the stands because they lost and get coddled by mom. I know Emilio Acho and some other guys are out there saying it was fantastic, it was great. He showed his feelings. We shouldn't stop somebody from showing their feelings. But I know Emilio Acho played football. He's a little on the younger side. But when he gets drafted, or it's draft time, the guys that are making that decision aren't 25, 26, and 27. There's gonna be some head coaches who've got some, you know, hair in their nuts, and the owners who have to stroke the check are gonna say, did you, 
if you go ahead and vet this guy good, I mean, is everything okay? Is he stable? Because I, 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 I've never seen quarterback, I've never seen, they're not quarterback, I've never seen any position player saying, well, I just want to go home and cuddle with my dog after getting beat. Could you imagine this guy being in Miami? He, he ain't coming to Miami, but could you imagine him being in Miami or Vegas? And after the game, the guy's like, hey man, let's let's go hang out. Let's hit South Beach and, and, and play around. But let's go ahead and, you know, hit the casino in Vegas. Now I'm just gonna go home and cuddle with my dog. What? What, what did you just say? I'm gonna cuddle with my dog, maybe call mama. I don't mean to be giving this kid a hard time, but maybe something happened in his family. Maybe somebody died and it was heavy on his heart. I just think an explanation has to be given to him. Not to me, not to you. Whoever, whatever team drafts Caleb Williams is going to make a multi-million dollar investment and a decision that could impact the team for years to come. We have all seen his obvious physical talent. There's no denying that whatsoever. But can you really ignore the personal questions that surround Caleb Williams? How will he react to the pressure of being an NFL quarterback? How will his teammates and the locker room feel about him? And the biggest question, is he even the right quarterback for your organization? This NFL draft has a number of top tier quarterbacks available. As the draft process evolves and he goes through some intense evaluations, will Kayla Williams even hold up to the scrutiny of being a top draft pick? For the Chicago Bears, the Washington Commanders, and the New England Patriots, and for any team looking to trade up, there seems to be a lot of unanswered questions about Kayla Williams. When drafting number one, no team can afford to make a mistake on this pick. So what do you think about Caleb Williams? Is he a player that you would risk your number one pick with? Is he, is he worthy of being the number one pick in the NFL draft? I'd love to hear your comments about Caleb Williams and his slot in the NFL draft. Talk to you soon.